What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I got a mohawk fade and I also did a design on the side and I want you guys to check that out. I'm going to walk you through the process step by step. So let's get into it. We're going to start this out with the number two going down the back and the sides and I'm knocking out all that bulk and I'm just going to get rid of all that bulk and all you guys keep asking me well, a lot of people keep asking me, hey, can you do a number two on the back and sides with scissors on top or maybe like a six on top or something? So actually, that's kind of how I start this haircut. Even though it's going to turn into a mohawk fade afterwards, I just kind of did it this way to show you guys that if you just knock the back and sides off and then we're going to go through and we're going to do some clipper over comb to, to get that blend on the top. Now, if you don't know how to do clipper over comb, please just refer to my clipper over comb video. I put a lot of work into it. I poured my heart out into it and I really think it can help you if you're struggling with it. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna do that clipper over comb. Not taking too much at one time, but take what you need to, keep using your eyes, keep looking at how it affects it. And then we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do the number six on top. Now, basically this haircut is your bread and butter. I mean, everybody wants to do skin fade, skin fade, skin fade. But really when you get down to it, this is the cut that makes a lot more money for you because the majority of clients, wherever you are, this is gonna be a big part of all skin fades or this is gonna be a big part of just the amount of haircuts that you do. So a two on the back and sides with the six on top, I mean, that's pretty much how I knock it out. I can pretty much do a haircut like that in somewhere around like seven minutes if, if I had to get it done that quick. Of course, I don't do that, but I could get it done quickly. And then I can go back through and detail it for another, you know, for a little while and knock it out of the park and it'll be, it'll be good to go. But that's not the end of this haircut. In this case, we're gonna go another step further. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start doing the design and stuff. I knocked that down to a number two so that I can get rid of some of that bulk so I could see like where I'm putting it. I throw a little bit of hairspray in there and that's gonna help this clipper cut, let it dry, and it's gonna help this trimmer cut real good. Now when I do my designs, like I always go through real carefully and I make a line that's not very thick. And the reason why I do that is so that like later when I need to manipulate it and move it a little bit, I still have the opportunity to do that. Now if you go through and you try to put a big perfect line in, then you gotta think about it this way. Like if it's not absolutely perfect where you put it, you're not gonna be able to move it because otherwise you're gonna wind up making the line too thick. It's gonna become disproportionate and you're gonna wind up, and you're gonna run into trouble. So the best thing you could do is just make the line sort of rough. Don't try to detail it too much. Just give yourself an idea of where you want that to be, whatever your mental picture is of what you're trying to draw. And then go back in in a second, go back in in the second pass, and then you can move the line a little bit. If you realize you were a little bit high in one spot, a little bit low in the other, it ain't no thing because you can go back through, you're gonna have enough room to straighten that out. So now you'll basically see me go back through with the trimmer, and now I'm trying to detail it a little bit better. And don't get yourself too crazy about it either because you're gonna wind up going back through with the um, razor, and that's really gonna make it perfect. That's really gonna make it pop. So you wanna get it close to perfect as you can, and then after that, you can go back through with the razor and you'll knock it out and we'll get that all set and situated. Now, I apologize, guys. You guys, I've been trying to get out some videos to you. I had a little computer issues, lost a really good video that I wanted to bring to you. Pretty disappointed about that. And then to top it off, yesterday I dropped my new 4K camera and it's broken. So, man, I swear, it's like every time I feel like I'm getting ahead just a little bit with this YouTube thing, I just get setback after setback. And on top of that, just to tell you guys what's going on with the giveaways, I bought like $170 worth of stuff to give away on the channel from some guy on Instagram and well, he didn't send it and unfortunately I sent the money through PayPal to quote friends and family on accident and I'm not gonna get a refund for that either. So even that, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting hit everywhere I look, I swear. So, but anyways, now I'm going to go back through. You're going to see me take these trimmers at the bottom and I'm going to remove some of that hair because I want to actually skin fade that out. I want to blend this all out, right? And I want to show that that I want to get some dimension going in there so that it's not just a, you know, a line. It needs to have some more stuff around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack this skin fade with a, with a one first just to knock out some of that bulk. But I'm always attacking my skin fades now with the half guard on with it closed. With the half guard on with it closed, you're gonna see that in some cases, it's gonna wipe out that line pretty good, which also still gives you that opportunity to go back through with the half uh, guard off and with just the open taper and then using your corners and just getting yourself a nice smooth blend. So going through again with the half guard closed, and this is just 
me deciding where I want to remove some bulk and where I want to kind of work on that design a little bit so that I can have the skin fade on this side of the head as well as the other side of the head because this is going to be a mohawk skin fade and I want it to kind of match both sides of the head as best I can but at the same time I don't want to take away from the design I want the design to still look clean and look good because if I skin them all the way out on that side then I'm not going to be able to get the design to pop the way I want to so in any mohawk fade what I like to do if you're trying to keep the C cups, you're gonna wanna go ahead and you're gonna wanna put this, this in on like a like an arching, you know, like a high arch around the ears. That's how you're gonna wanna put the skin fade in. And then sometimes I kinda like to define my parameters in the back. I just like to kinda fix that V up and get it kinda situated. Like it doesn't have to be perfect right now because again, we're gonna come back through with the razor. And by the time we're done blending some of this out, a lot of this is gonna change anyways. But that's basically all I wanna do. I wanna just get rid of all that so that I got that look, looking nice and clean. And once I have that all balded out, I'm gonna of course go back in with the electric shavers and I'm gonna use the Braun uh, Series 9, which is my favorite electric shaver. It makes my job a lot easier. I mean, matter of fact, last night I got stuck here pretty late and a guy wanted his whole head shaved and I shaved the whole head with the, the 5.0 and I went through with the Braun Series 9. And I'll tell you, man, that machine is just such a beast. I mean, it probably took not even a quarter of the time it would have taken me to do with the wall. So thank God for some things that make my life a little bit easier like that. That and the Aster Volt, man, these things are just such great tools. So you see me again attacking my skin fade first with the half guard close and now I'm following it up with the open taper and I'm keeping it on an angle and I'm working those corners and slowly I'll begin closing that blade because I put that blade, I put that line in with the trimmer. So eventually I'm gonna start closing that blade down and knocking out that line and you're gonna see it start to dissipate. This is a super easy way to do your skin fades. Put your first guideline in with the half close and then follow it up with the open taper. The open taper and the half close are very close in length to each other and all clippers cut better when the clipper is in the closed position, which is why I prefer to do it this way rather than putting the first guideline in with the open taper. So I'm heading into that next line. The next side, the next guideline that I'm working on is my open number one guard. With the open number one guard, you'll see me put in that secondary guideline. There's gonna be a little bit of weight towards the top of that, but it's no big deal. And little by little, I'm gonna begin closing that and closing that. In a way, you know, a lot of people ask me about these Mohawk fades and they think that it's some difficult thing to do. Like once you understand how to fade, it really doesn't matter what position you put it in or how you do it. And in a way, these Mohawk fades are easier because I always tell you guys to keep your clip around an angle. And consequently, because of the curvature of the line that you put in, the clippers are going to be on the angle even easier. So you're going to find this whole thing just to be easy if you apply the same fade process that I use. So once I was done with the open and the close number one, I went back to the half guard. You're gonna see me keeping it on an angle, opening it and closing it. Because again, I put my line in with the trimmer and I attacked it with the half guard closed. So after I was done using the open taper and moving down to the closed taper, you see what basically I had to do is I had to go back with the half guard slightly open and then I'm gonna play with it. I'm gonna go open and close and I'm just using my eyes, letting them know where I need to go and I'm wiping out that last little bit of what remains of a line. And you're gonna see it start to come out pretty smooth in this step. 90% of the time your fades are gonna be almost done when, when you return back to the half guard when you're done with the number one. So again, if there's any more residual, go ahead and go all the way down to the open taper. If you have to jump around a little bit, you have to do what you have to do. If the one guard is not getting it out, then you gotta go to the half. If the half guard closed is not getting it out, then you gotta go back down to the open taper. It ain't no thing, it's just you gotta think about it. If what you're doing is not working, there's only one thing you can do in barbering and that's usually taking it down a little bit lower. Obviously, if you leave it longer, then that's gonna stay that way and you're not gonna be able to get that line out. You're not gonna be able to remove that bulk. Okay, you see me pretty much finishing up this fade here on this side. I'm going in with the open on the one and one half, and then I'm gonna follow it up by closing the one and one half. And, geez, that air conditioner is actually pretty loud. But anyways, I've almost got this finished, and I'm gonna go back through, and now I'm gonna hit it with the razor. I'm gonna line that all up, get him looking good, and I'm gonna finish off this design, and you guys can just check out what's left. 
If there's anything else you guys want to see or anything that I'm not covering or maybe I'm not being clear enough, please just let me know. I'll try to do it for you and I'll try to get a video up as soon as possible. Of course, now I'm waiting on like a camera repair, so I might be a little bit behind in the cards here, but I'm hoping to get this whole thing situated as quickly as possible and get this content out to you as often and as good of quality as I possibly can. I'm trying to get everything up into 4K so that you guys can see a much cleaner, clearer picture. So yeah, it's just expensive to do all this stuff in 4K. It's just like crazy between the camera and the computer and all the stuff that goes into it. So again, I'm trying hard to give you guys the best content I can. And if there's anything you want to see, go ahead and leave it in that link below. But other than that, this is Mr. Eddie Barber. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're not already. Click that like button. It really helps me out. And I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.